Hello, Governor. I'm gonna talk to you today about the atmosphere. Yep. All right. That was just like a really bad impression of an English accent. Hello, Governor. I'll let you tell you about the atmosphere. Oh, I don't know how it's, they talk like. But anyway, gonna talk to you about the atmosphere and what it's all about. First, we gotta talk about clean air. <sighs> clean air. So what's clean air all about? Well, depending on where you stay, whether you're up in the mountains or out there on one of the islands in the Pacific Ocean, the composition of clean air is different. But generally speaking, when we're here at the sea level and the air is clean, that means away from the city, away from the factories, clean air is comprised of 79% nitrogen and 20% oxygen with about 1% of all the various gases like argon, uh, carbon dioxide, etc, etc, etc. Alright? Now, why is nitrogen 79% of all clean air? Well, because nitrogen itself is very unreactive. Alright? So, it's just floating in the air, not doing much. And that's why after millions and 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 millions of years, the uh, n number or amount of nitrogen over time accumulates. So as of today, it has 79% nitrogen. Uh, our clean air is comprised of nitrogen. Now, these ratios will differ if you have pollution. So if you live in a very highly polluted area, then it ain't gonna be that much. But even though it's insignificant, like 0.5% or 0.05%, um, it's still quite uh, disastrous. Uh, like if you have pollutants in the air, if you just increase by a fraction of a uh, percent, you, you'll still get respiratory or, or, or uh, health problems. All right, so uh, clean air is kind of just out there. So. Uh, people actually go and collect all this clean air and then they liquefy it. That means they freeze it all the way down to negative 20, 200 over degrees, all right, 200 over degrees, and then pass it through a fractional, dis, uh, fractional column. They put it through a fractional column. Let me get a pen. A fractional column. So this is a fractional column. Okay, and in the column there'll be like lots and lots of little things, and then they're like pipes or something like that, glass or pipes. Okay, and and what it's going to do is that when liquid air is passed in through one end of the fractional column, as the air warms up to minus 196 degrees, nitrogen is going to escape here, and as the air warms up up to negative 183 degrees up here, oxygen gas is collected here. Now there are various uses for nitrogen and oxygen gas. Oxygen we know is used for breathing, diving, uh, in hospitals we use it you know, to, uh, uh, for patients to breathe. And nitrogen gas can be used in the canning of foods, right, or, or making uh, chips, you know, with the big old bags, you can flush in lots of nitrogen to make the bags big, so it looks appeal appealing to the consumer. Uh, what else is can nitrogen do? Yeah, in, 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 a, in a, uh, some reactions you, you, that requires an inert environment, you have nitrogen. Uh, people put nitrogen in uh, race car tires because it's relatively inert, so it does not um, expand when you heat up the nitrogen air uh, as much, so it's, it's very consistent. So lots of applications of oxygen and nitrogen. Now let's move on. The atmosphere. So how atmosphere we know what it's comprised of and how, does, how do us humans contribute to the uh, atmosphere and alter the composition of air in the atmosphere? Well, well uh, naturally, plants and animals, when they die, decay, transpire, respire, uh, it emits uh, carbon dioxide, okay, and uh, some methane gases as well, alright, 
These are called greenhouse gases. These are not pollutants. They are not pollutants. That means they do not uh, pollute the world. Because if, that, if, it, if they are pollutants, so what we're breathing out is pollute, pollutants, which does not make sense because plants take in uh, CO2 and they're fine and dandy. All right? So these are greenhouse gases. Now, what exactly are greenhouse gases? Well, greenhouse gases are gases that trap the heat from the earth, trap the heat that prevents heat from escaping the earth. All right? So basically, if you have like a globe, this is earth. All right, I'm going to draw America and South America in this jiggly, jiggly thing. Europe, parts of Africa. So greenhouse gases accumulate in the atmosphere, and so it prevents heat from escaping. Okay? It also uh, serves like uh, prevents some of the radiation from outer space from coming in and harming us. But that's a whole other story. It also reflects some of the energy here, but the energy here that's coming in, uh, I guess, right, not so important as the heat coming from uh, radiating away from the Earth. This heat radiation in the form of infrared uh, radiation uh, hits the greenhouse gases and deflects back to Earth. So it heat rises from the Earth, hits the atmosphere, goes back down, all right? So that's what greenhouse gases do. They trap the heat from escaping the earth. Now, some amount of greenhouse gases is, is, is vital. Some amounts of greenhouse gases are vital because it allows the earth to be warm enough so that organisms that we understand of as of today can survive. However, if it gets too cold because of the lack of greenhouse gases, um, these organisms, even us included, will have to evolve or die off. Uh, if it gets too hot, the same also occurs. So uh, that's what these methane and carbon dioxide are. These are greenhouse gases. Now methane is very, 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 very potent. So very, very, very potent greenhouse gas. That means it traps heat more efficiently than carbon dioxide. And it all has to do with the way the chemical structures are and the bonds are, and the way it uh, interacts with infrared radiation that's coming into and hitting the molecule. But that's not what we're going to study at our level. It's for further on. Okay? So these are greenhouse gases. Uh, CO2 and methane also comes from uh, man-made sources like combustion of the factories, right, of the fossil fuels in factories, uh, also uh, from digest, uh, you know, in what you call landfills and uh, waste areas, um, things that go undergo a decay will also emit a lot of uh, methane, all right, when we drill for oil and gas, um, also, a lot of uh, CO2 and uh, methane are released in the atmosphere. And one of the also funny things is that when carbon dioxide you know, gets dissolved into the oceans, um, it forms carbonic acid, all right? And carbonic acid will interact with a lot of these crustaceans or shellfish because the shells are made of uh, carbonates. And so this acid will kind of neutralize um, the basic uh, shell that these organisms have, the shellfish have. And so you get shellfish with uh, shells that are getting thinner and thinner from uh, recent history. All right? So you get fishermen reporting shellfish having very thin shells. So I guess crabs will have really thin shells. And oysters won't have very pretty oysters anymore. Pearls, I mean. So, anyway, that's one of the uh, drawbacks of having too much CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, so now we're going to talk about pollutants and um, what kind of pollutants are emitted by human activity. Uh, carbon monoxide, which is a uh, very uh, uh, odorless, uh, transparent, clear gas, uh, is 
a pollutant because it's uh, poisonous when you breathe it, you can kind, of, kind of suffocate and die because it interferes with the transportation of, of oxygen in the blood stream. So that's not, not a good thing to have. Uh, nitrogen oxides, uh, namely nitrogen dioxide, is a pollutant. Uh, it uh, causes a photochemical smog. It means it makes the, the, the place like really gray and brown. The, the air, the air gray and brown. Yeah, so uh, what it does is it's just unsightly and also it, it's, it's not good for health. You got uh, sulfur dioxide, which, which is one of the proponents of um, uh, acid rain, right? It com for, uh, combines with the clouds, it forms uh, as, uh, sulfuric acid and it falls down into our, pl our cities and destroying our buildings, right? Because it's acidifying all the buildings, so the buildings deteriorate very quickly. You see a lot of statues um, made of marbles, especially. Uh, you know, the face of the statues deforms, you know, looks like Freddy Krueger, all because of that. So that's kind of bad. And acidic, acidic rain is very common, especially in industrial areas. Lead, lead in a form of uh, eth ethyl lead uh, molecule that's inside um, uh, leaded petrol is bad because lead uh, is kind of like a poison, a slow poison that prevents uh, brain development of young organisms like you uh, and also maybe little dogs and little cats stuff like that. So what are we doing in terms of reducing the number of pollutants? Well, for lead, we have, uh, most places have banned leaded petrol. So that's gone, which is good. Uh, however, burning hydrocarbons uh, also will still produce uh, these three pollutants. And if there's not enough oxygen in the atmosphere during the combustion phase, you get a lot of carbon monoxide. So uh, what vehicles have, like vehicles, they have what we call a catalytic converter. A catalytic converter has um, what called catalyst inside it. So whenever an engine runs, the, the petrol that is converted into a carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, gets converted into a safe safer chemicals, like carbon monoxide gets converted to carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide gets converted into nitrogen gas, and so these catalysts, usually made of platinum, will uh, initiate that reaction in the exhaust portion of the vehicle. All right, uh, factories use scrubbers, also um, scrubbers are just like lots of base, like limestone or chalk, right down at the Flute of the uh, what, what do you call this? Flute of the uh, pipes, I guess the factory pipes that allows the gas to escape. So when any acidic stuff like sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide reacts with it, right? The acid acid stuff that comes out of it because there's water vapors also uh, included in the combustion, right? So uh, forms acid, acidic uh, molecules as it goes up these flute and uh, the acid will react with the chalk, the limestone and gets neutralized in there. Alright, so scrubbers, this, these things are called scrubbers, the things inside are called scrubbers. These scrubbers will scrub off the acid, acidity that has been uh, emitted, that will otherwise be emitted outwards. And then the new form of um, reducing pollutants and even carbon dioxide is a process called sequestration. Uh, basically, it's a little long pipe that goes deep into the ground. And what you can do is you're going to sequester or suppress all the gases or pollutants deep down in the earth. All right. So uh, we don't really know a lot about this technology. Uh, there's some what you call uh, there are some uh, 
criticisms about it, in that it, it blows up the earth and then there's too much gases down in the earth and then it causes co uh, the, the earth to collapse or the soil to collapse downwards. And so that's kind of bad. It also talks about some of these gases uh, leaks into um, our water system. So uh, that's another bad thing. And this is the oil and gas industry. All right, that's it about the atmosphere. Oh, lots of stuff.